There is reporting coming out tonight that Republicans in Washington are trying yet again right now for a third time to pass an Obamacare repeal bill. Uh, this is important most of all because health care is very, very important. This is important to the Trump administration, specifically because they just passed the 100 days in office mark without having passed any major legislation at all. And so they would please like to do that, particularly since Republicans control the White House and the House and the Senate as far as, as, as political possibility is concerned for passing legislation. For them, no time like the present. If they can't pass something now, when can they pass something? So all day today and into tonight, people have been uh, calling their legislators to try to save Obamacare. People have been calling and advocating against the Obamacare repeal bill the way people have been doing right from the very beginning of this administration. Um, on the Republican side, Republican congressional leadership is desperately whipping votes to try to save this Obamacare repeal bill from failing for a third time in a row, just with members of their own party. So that's what's been happening today and into tonight on the congressional side of this. On the administration side of this, though, uh, the efforts to repeal Obamacare have not been helped by the fact that the administration seems confused about what they're trying to do. The president himself doesn't seem to understand the concept of what is trying, what the Republicans are, are trying to do with Obamacare repeal uh, in Congress. Over the weekend, the president talked about how the Republican plan to repeal Obamacare will cover pre-existing conditions. It does not cover pre-existing conditions. He talked about how the Republican plan will reduce premiums. It will increase premiums. I mean, the administration right up to and including the White House and the president himself just don't seem to understand the basics of even the big stuff that they're working on when it comes to legislation. So you say they weren't able to pass any major legislation. It may matter toward getting to that point. It may matter toward getting to that realization that they don't even understand what's being worked on. I mean, that, that government shutdown that would have otherwise happened at midnight on Friday night, you know, that, that one was averted by a one-week funding bill that was passed on Friday with just hours to spare. Well, over the weekend, news emerged that they've also now agreed in Congress on a five-month spending bill that will put off the threat of another government shutdown until December. Now, where does the administration come in on this? Do they understand this? Well, the administration had said they would force Democrats to pay for Trump's border wall in this spending bill. They said they would risk a government shutdown or they would threaten health insurance subsidies to force the Democrats to pay for the wall. You know, the health insurance subsidies are still in the bill. There is not going to be a shutdown and there's no funding for the wall. The administration, the president himself, said they were going to defund sanctuary cities. They did not defund sanctuary cities. They said they were going to kill all federal funding for Planned Parenthood. They, they did not kill federal funding for Planned Parenthood. They said they were going to kill the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. They did not kill either of those things. They said they were going to lop 30% off the EPA budget. They lopped 1% off the EPA budget. They said they were going to cut a billion dollars out of the National Institutes of Health. The bill actually adds $2 billion to the National Institutes of Health. And all that is exciting news, particularly if you like things like the National Institutes of Health, right? But this political question for why the administration can't do anything, why they can't accomplish anything they want to do, even with Republican unified control of government, it is an underappreciated thing, particularly in the Beltway Press, which loves to focus on the personality of individual leaders, you know, as a, as a substitute for other forms of political effectiveness, right? It is, it is an underappreciated thing that the federal government has a bunch of people in it. <laughs> it's, it's big, it's complex, it's filled with lots of important consequential jobs where it matters who's in those jobs. And under the Trump administration, we've got some weird people in relatively big positions. I mean, we've got weird, 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 grifty Don Benton, sc sc scuffy the tugboat's evil twin running the selective service. Whether or not you think we are likely to bring back the draft or you think it's important that we maintain that, why is that guy running that agency? We have promoted to senior positions, people who flunked out of even mid-level positions in Republican state government. And, and it matters when you put people in charge of things that they don't believe in. For example, the administration has now announced that they have hired uh, as the new Deputy Assistant Secretary for Population Affairs at Health and Human Services. This is the part of Health and Human Services that oversees Title X, which oversees federal family planning efforts. 
They've hired somebody for that job for what is essentially the one contraception job in the entire federal government. They have hired for that job a person who does not believe in contraception. Of course, contraception doesn't work. It, uh, its efficacy is, is very low. That's Teresa Manning. Her name was Teresa Wagner at the time. Uh, she's just been named Deputy Assistant Secretary for Population Affairs at the Department of Health and Human Services. She believes that contraception, of course, doesn't work. And that's fine. Believe what you want. But that means the one job you are inherently not qualified for in the federal government or anywhere else is overseeing contraception programs. It's like, I mean, I don't believe in zombies, which is fine unless there was a federal job in charge of fighting zombies or facilitating zombies, in which case me not believing in zombies would make me unqualified for the zombie job. You know what I'm saying? But of course, contraception doesn't work. That's who they've put in charge of contraception programs in the federal government. She also incidentally claims that the link between abortion and breast cancer is, quote, undisputed. In real life, there is no link between abortion and breast cancer. That same contention, though, has also been made by the new nominee for an even bigger job at HHS, the new nominee to be the Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs at the Department of Health and Human Services. This appointment has made uh, a little more noise because Charmaine Yost, the nominee, is a relatively well-known um, hardline anti-abortion activist. And it is weird to think that the spokesperson for Health and Human Services in the United States of America is now going to be somebody who adamantly insists that abortion causes breast cancer when abortion doesn't cause breast cancer. But let it also be noted that she's going to be the top communications person, the public affairs person for Health and Human Services in the U.S. government. Since she has been named to that position, Charmaine Yost, has, Charmaine Yost has apparently been busy scrubbing as fast as she can her own public profile and past statements off the internet machine. Uh, her name is Charmaine Yost. As I said, she runs a website that is imaginatively called CharmaineYost.com. Uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation was first to notice on Friday afternoon when she was announced for this big job. They were first to notice that posts from her website were disappearing at an alarming clip. Uh, Russ Kick, who we've talked about on this show before, he's the brilliant online archivist and investigator who runs the MemoryHole2.org. Russ Kick then started saving the stuff that Charmaine Yost had been yanking down off her website, and it is Hall of Fame stuff, man, for the person who's about to be the top public affairs person at Health and Human Services. Quote, half of rape allegations are false. Buying a McDonald's hamburger promotes the homosexual lifestyle. I don't know if Obama is a demon or an orgy. I think, I think maybe it's supposed to be ogre, but it's, it's orgy. Uh, how about this one? Homosexuals advance breakup of childless families. I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. Uh, she accuses Walmart of homosexualist activism. Homosexualist? It's not a word I was previously aware of, but I fully embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> Writing about marriage between uh, two women, uh, she, she jokes, quote, I was wrong to suggest that large farm animals were a part of the festivities. Charmaine Yost will now be the top spokesperson and assistant secretary for public affairs at our nation's Department of Health and Human Services. She is trying to pull that stuff down off her public website, but uh, she's not succeeding thanks to uh, investigators like Russ Kick. Part of what is going on with this new administration cannot be divined from reading Donald Trump's tweets about the Civil War or, you know, reading his musings or listening to his interviews where he talks about himself and what he thinks about his big electoral college win this week. I mean, part of what is important and needs to be divined about this administration cannot be divined from thinking about his personality or watching him in action. A lot of what's going on is about the government as an entity. It's about the government as not just one person. It's about the fact that this is somewhere below the B team that the Trump administration is bringing to Washington. And everybody says personnel is policy. That is true. You can see the policy thinking behind some of these appointments. But personnel is also basic competence. And that's where we're running into some trouble. More ahead tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.